Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name's Vin Pierre, and on today's episode, after a couple of weeks off, we're going back to some scotch. Now, as you know, on the on the channel, I'm called No Nonsense Whiskey, not No Nonsense Scotch, so I do tend to cover things from all over the world, but I do try to come back to scotch more often than not, mainly because it's the easiest thing for me to get hold of, but in any case, we've got some more scotch. Now, this one here today, you'd be forgiven for not knowing what this is at all, because Glen Keith is a distillery that doesn't typically have its own bottling. In fact, right now, at time of recording, realistically, this is the only one you're gonna get hold of. There are some other ones that we'll talk about in a little bit that are travel retail that are coming to our markets, hopefully sometime this year in 2020. But right now, especially where I am, this is all I can get hold of right now. So as I said, this is Glen Keith. This is a Shivers Brothers distillery, and it used to be Seagram's back in the day. It's a fairly new Scottish distillery in terms of the fact it was built in the 50s. It was actually closed in 99, shifted over to the Shivers Brothers, now Perno Ricard, and was opened again in 2013. Kept it quiet again as usual. It's part of the Shivers Brothers range, so you'll typically find whiskies made by this distillery in their kind of range blends. But this one was released in 2017. This is the distillery edition. There you go. So 40 percenter, we're going to take a guess at fairly youthful, probably added colour, probably chill filtered, but none of that information is given to me on any of the labels, uh, nor online really. It's kind of a, a bit of a, a secret, but you'll see why I might quite like this as we go through the tasting, because it's quite cheap. In the UK, it's between 20 to 25 pounds. I'm not sure what this is going to be like where you are in your territories, but I think it's pretty available in most proper let's say websites or shops you're not going to find this in supermarkets worldwide i don't think but keep your eyes peeled you might see something like that the uh that should also say the secrets range uh, that should be coming to us fairly soon they've got three in the range of glen keith and that's a 21 a 25 and a 28 i'm expecting them to be quite expensive so probably won't see them on the channel anytime soon but you know who knows let's get into the nose then and see what we've got Okay, so it's a Speyside whiskey, and for me, I get this kind of very indicative Speyside-y vibe about it. It really helps me to identify Speyside in kind of blind tasting and things like that, and we're talking like orchard fruits, apples, pears, that sort of thing. It's vanillas, and there's a touch of kind of light citrusy about it. Something that we should take from the actual box itself is the words here, matured in traditional oak. Um, I mean, that's obviously clearly ex-bourbon but uh, there's, there's not likely to be any new oak in this considering the price of the actual whiskey itself uh, on the downside if there is added color in this and it, it is fairly youthful i should imagine that we're talking maybe second or third fill on the barrels but you know that's there's a reason why it's so cheap that's all i'm saying let's try on the palette then Okay, the palette doesn't kind of portray anything too different from the nose. Again, more of those vanillas, apples, pears. Kind of lost the citrusy notes to it, I have to admit. In uh, in its place is this kind of spicy cinnamon to it. And on the back end, oh, the finish isn't kind of huge. It's maybe kind of short-ish. The spices, the cinnamon spices remain. And it's a little oaky as well. Not like overly oaked, but just a little oaky. It is a touch thin for my kind of general tasting likingness, but overall there's, it's, it's a good package, I would say. It's one of those ones where it's it's cheap and it's not afraid to be cheap. It's a good value whiskey. My only kind of comparison that I would think of off the top of my head that's done it wrong is the Glenlivet Founders Reserve, Founders Choice, I forget what it's even called now, that Founders rubbish. But that's been put out to market at about £35. This is a good 10, maybe even 15 pounds cheaper. Uh, and that puts it in the UK in the same sort of bracket as what's coming out of like Aldi and Lidl and that sort of thing. And they're, they're like reasonable whiskies. Again, they don't like the world on fire, but for the price you're being asked to pay, not too bad. And that's where this is sitting. In fact, something that I, it's a phrase that I've kind of been coining myself. It's a bit of a joke, but it really does work. It's something that I call the guard whiskey. That's where this sits. Let me demonstrate you a guard whiskey. So 
reaching down there unprofessionally. I have a Cotswolds Lord Mayor's Reserve. Uh, it's um, it's not cheap. So what you would do is you'd put this in your cabinet. There you go. That's the hypothetical cabinet in the back there. And you want to avoid tapping into that as much as you can. So what you do is you put something like this in front of it. Like that. So when you come to it and you've had maybe a couple of beers, you fancy a little top off of the night, you fancy a little a little dram, you open up the cabinet, you think, oh, yeah, and you grab that. Instead of grabbing that. There you go. Guard whiskey. So that's where I would say this fits. It's all around it's 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 okay. You know, it's it wouldn't score very highly for me if I did score, I don't think, but it wouldn't score very low either. You know, there are far worse whiskies out there in the world and they are far better whiskies, but this one's in the right sort of price bracket. 